All right? OK. Um, so uh, I'm going to give a talk about uh, COPPA, which is like a C++ oriented build system that I've spent um, quite a bit of time working on. Um, it's based on SCONS. Um, so how many people here, how many people are familiar with SCONS? OK. So uh, what are the rest of you guys used to build with? Uh, CMake, Make? Who uses CMake? Right? So who uses bare bones Make? Hardcore. Anybody use auto tools because they're like really hardcore? Oh, there's. Oh yeah. Okay. There's there's always well two as it happens. BTCF. Oh yeah. Who who, who uses BJAM? Okay. Respect. <laughs> okay. So um. So Copper grew out of this idea of um we wanted to be able to build C plus plus like C plus plus developers. So we want to build multiple variants. We want to build, um, you know, use lots of different uh, compiler flags for different situations and so on. And we didn't want to pull it like global builds. So we wanted something very, very simple. Um, I did a lot of work on Make before. The trouble with Make was that uh, back in the day, I guess going back maybe 15 years now, we actually hit bugs in Make. Um, and so Make became a problem. So we looked at SCONs, but the trouble with SCONs is it's really like a set of tools just to build dependency trees. If you want to do anything kind of more declarative, more uh, straightforward, it's, it's, it's a lot of effort. So um, COPPA is basically a Python library. You can download it, uh, pip install COPPA. So it's very, very simple. You have to have SCONs installed, obviously, but um, apart from that, it's, it's pretty easy. So there, there's really no setup at all. So What's the point of it? Well, we wanted something that was like make, right? Because it's nice to type make in a directory and have it do the right thing. So if you're in a, a subdirectory, for example, and you type make, you know if there's a make file there, it's going to build, it's, it's going to run the targets that are there in, in that, in that subfolder, um, things like that. SCONS um, doesn't work that way. Um, you have an sconstruct file at the bottom. We'll come back to this. Um, and then you have sconscript files. And these files um, actually uh, decide what you're going to do in different subdirectories. So, we wanted a clear structure, but most importantly, we wanted a clear vocabulary. So we wanted to be able to talk about things like what's a tool chain, what's the build variant, what's an architecture, what's a, what's a dependency, what ABI are we using, right? So that you don't have this problem of, say, you use Boost, you build Boost, and uh, it turns out that you get some weird runtime crash because however your BJAM was configured, you ended up with the wrong ABI flags, okay? So, and we also wanted to kind of capture best practices. And we wanted this idea of saying that, OK, if you have, if you have a, a set of um, complex build requirements, so for example, you want to be able to use Boost or another language that requires compilation or something a little bit more complicated, uh, like Quince, for example, if you didn't database work, then you want the experts to be able to write that stuff and then other people just to use it. And the, when I say use it, I mean say, I want to use Boost. That's it, right? So no complexity. So here's a quick summary, one minute, one minute primer. It'll be less than that. Um, so for those not familiar, if we have a structure like this over here, and um, we've got project, we've got some sort of uh, project that we want to actually, you know, some subfolder. We've got a CPP file. We've got our sconstruct file at the bottom and an sconscript file, which tells us what we want to do, right? So from our base folder, we can run scons. If we're in the subfolder, we can run scons minus d, which means the then it'll come down, it'll find the sconstruct file, and that'll kick everything off. And if you want to read more about this, the user guide or the man page. Actually, the man page is strangely better than the user guide. So useful tip. All right, so to, to give, uh, give us a goal here, um, we'll, try and, we'll actually try and do something. So um, anybody familiar with uh, stock tweets, or uh, I guess Twitter or anything like this, right? So they, they produce uh, JSON messages. Um, so let's say we want to do some sentiment analysis. We might decide we want to build a lexicon. So we'll get a dump file, say, of a month's worth of data from StockTwits. And we'll go through that, and we'll produce a CSV that we can then pump into some statistical analysis software that will allow us to you know, get some, some figures out of it. Um, so we'll want to, you know, we'll, we have a couple of stipulations here. We'll, we'll, we'll not use Python to do this. Right, because Python would have been a nice option. Um, we'll use C++, and actually the C++ turned out to be quicker than the Python. Well, I mean, not quicker to run, easier to, to write. Um, we'll, we'll use a couple of tool chains, and we'll do debug and release variants. So very, very simple. So here's what we need to do to do this, right? So back to our basic structure. We're going to put all our code in main.cpp. We're not going to be very clever about separating this out. Um, 
So in order to actually to build this, we only need uh, to write our S construct and our S construct file. So in our S construct file, we simply do import copper and then copper.run, right? And that's really just a, an entry point. Now, anybody who's really familiar with SCONs will be saying, well, why didn't you make that a tool and so on and so forth? There are, there are reasons, but we're not going to do that right now. And then in your S conscript file, which is kind of like your make file, we simply say, we import the environment which is given to us. So the, the environment is created outside. So when I, when I talk about environment, I mean like a build environment. So for example, if it's a debug build or a release build, um, then that information will be created, put into this environment object, and then passed in um, to the SCON script file for execution. So the SCON script file will get executed essentially many times. Now, that's not the way the execution model works, but conceptually, you can think of it that way. So we've got one source file, and we'll produce one binary. So we'll use uh, a method that we have in Cover called build, similar to the method program in SCONs. The difference is build um, does a couple of extra things, um, tracks some additional information, um, which lets you uh, understand the progress of your builds a bit, little bit better. So anyway, that's it. So if we, if we go to the command line and we type scons, this will build, and here's what it will do, right? So what it will do is it will actually create a build folder. So it's an out-of-source build, obviously. This is what we want to do. Um, for if we had multiple uh, different um, subfolders, each would get their own subfolder uh, based either on the subfolder if you only have conscript. But if you had multiple conscripts in here, for example, for different tests, um, then you would have multiple um, uh, folders over here. And then for your tool chain, your, 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 whether it's debug or release, the architecture, and so on, and you would eventually get your binary file over here. So um, this, is, this is pretty straightforward. You've got your, your object files, and it's all, it's all very simple. So, um, we haven't had to do very much. Um, we've, we've built something that, that does nothing, so that, that, that makes sense. So um, let's say we want to use uh, program options from Boost. What could, what could be simpler? Because we want to we want to read in an input file name and we want to produce an output file name. This is kind of what we're we're trying to do here. So we need to. So so anyway, well, first of all, this is a. We'll just assume there's helper functions here that let us write this code here. So we're just trying to get some options in. We're just trying to validate them. So pretty simple. Um, so we have to obviously include. Well, as it happens, we're including program options and optional. So we need to uh, write our S construct file. So here's what we do. We want to use Boost. So we say, what version of Boost do we want to use? Well, well, we'll just take the latest, right? Because we don't really care. So we'll just do, uh, we'll define a default option, Boost minus version. And we'll say, OK, latest. OK, you can put in a version number there. You could put in Boost uh, minus location. And you could specify a particular um, Boost that you've maybe downloaded. You've patched it, whatever you've done with it. Doesn't really matter. And then we'll say that for all of the S conscript files that we're going to um, sort of execute in our tree, we will make, uh, we will say that boost will be a default dependency. In other words, we will have the, you know, include directory available for boost, any of the, uh, any of the libraries we want to, to add in will, will also be available. So that's our S construct file. So now we can, we can use boost, right? Now, in the S construct file, um, we need to make, do a little bit of work, um, and that is we need to say that we're going to, in this case, we want to statically link. Um, against boost uh, program options. Now, what's interesting about this is that, uh, so this here is normal, this is standard SCONs. You append unique to your environment. Uh, static lives is a, is, is a, is a couple thing. In, um, in SCONs, by default, you just have lives, L-I-B-S. So if you wanted to do static and dynamic linking of different libraries, then you have to jump through a lot of hoops to do that. In fact, it's almost impossible. Um, and then we just say, OK, build a static library. So what happens is that, oh, well, well, we'll skip past this. What happens is that this actually builds. So let's, um, let's do an alt tab and find, where are we? Which one is this? Yeah, so let's do let's cons. Yeah, let's cons and see what happens. Uh, we'll actually we'll limit this to just a debug build because we don't want to be here all day. So a couple of things happen. It tells us what our available tool chains are. Wiz is passed. It, uh, it, if you haven't got Boost, it will have downloaded it. OK, we didn't want to try that here, because that will crash. It'll actually then build the libraries. It'll use the flags that you've actually set. So we've actually set C++ 1Z. So it'll use the same flags for Boost. Um, we'll come back to this. So this will just do what we expect it to do. So 
It's going to build, it's only going to build prog program options. It doesn't build what we don't need to build. Um, so very straightforward. I've got five minutes left, so we're going to have to speed this up. And we're done, right? So back to here. So some code for completeness. We don't need to see this. It actually works. Um, uh, so this is just a summary of what, what we just saw there. And uh, we now have, uh, so, so basically you can see that for each variant it tells you uh, all the messages are in here, but you can actually see the progress through the build. Um, and you can see that it's added the right flags that we want um, when, we, when we compile, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's linked the file as we want it to. Be. So it's, it's done everything we, we, we expected. Um, and as you can see, the working files are what we would expect. Now in the boost tree, what we actually do is for, every, for, for whatever um, uh, ABI flags we pass and whatever architecture we have, we will put them in subdirectories. So these, these get reused. This gets cached, and if you use it in other projects, then that's OK. So now we'll, uh, we'll do some parsing. We'll, we'll parse some JSON. So we want to use um, a, a JSON library. So uh, I found this one, Rapid JSON. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, you can review them as, as you want. But in order to use this, um, we just need to make this change to our construct file. So we'll summarize that. Um, we've added some stuff that talks about rapid JSON. So it turns out rapid JSON is a header only, header only library. So we can use this facility here, copper header library dependency. We'll just call it rapid JSON. That's what we'll do. Um, and we'll create, this creates a factory. So we have a factory here, um, rapid JSON. We'll add that this then gives us the ability to express these options. You can pass these on the command line, or if you want, you can actually put them in here as default options. That's what we have done. Because this is on GitHub, um, we actually can use the, the Git protocol to, to get this from GitHub, right? Um, and obviously, we can also we also then specify that the uh, headers that we want are in the include subdirectory. And finally, uh, we've only got one Ascon script file, and we want to use this, so we'll make it a default dependency as well. So pretty straightforward. So um, obviously, I skimmed very briefly the, uh, the, um, the documentation on their site. And they said, oh, this is header only. So OK, fine. Let's try it, see what works. Um, so that's just what I've said. We'll add in some extra code to read the JSON. Where is it? Oh, generate CSV. So um, the only difference is we've added rapid JSON document.h at the top. So this is our file. Um, we have some, this is, this is what the file looks like. Again, this is the, the one that does the work. And this is the code. So this is just, uh, this here is just code for, for I, I needed to get two, two things. I needed to get the actual tweet message, if you like, and I needed to get the, uh, the sentiment, which was, a, which was in a sub object. So this is just how you do it in Rapid JSON. Doesn't really matter. OK, so when we build this, this is what happens. We automatically have this added to our command line. Fantastic, and uh, and it works. It works works uh, very well. So let's uh, let's see this. Um, okay. So if we go back to uh, where are we? here, if we do scons, now this is with the with the extra information. Hopefully this will do the right thing. Okay. This is going to de debug on uh, de debug and release. So by default, it does both if you limit it. OK, so it's done. Uh, we might want to do, we said we wanted to do this for a clang as well. So um, clang will be minus minus till chains equals, we'll add clang. We'll clang, clang 3 8. Clang uh, 3 8. And we'll also leave the GCC 5 3 in there. Why not? I mean, because it's not going to build it again. So let's try that. Um, now, if this hasn't built boost with Clang, it'll go and do that. I've got one minute left, so. Um, got three. Oh, I've got three, so your clock's better than mine. OK, so this is just going to fire three, and hopefully it will build. This is what you come to ACCU for, actually, is to watch other people compile stuff. Oh, no, you were too slow. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, OK, we, we, we'll come back to this, OK? Um, so lastly, just to show that this does actually work, um, the result of this, oh, uh, where are we? Uh, that looks right. So this is in the, this is in the, the folder, so if I just 
to return here. OK, so here we are. So let's, um, let's run this. There we are. So we're just going to pass it a, a, a 1.6 gig file, and we'll produce our CSV. So hopefully this will not shame me. OK, so let's do ls minus al. And there's our file. OK, so if we go back finally to the presentation. So there's a lot of different stuff here. I, I can only scratch the surface in 15 minutes, but you can do things like you can set defaults. They'll get stored. You can choose what you want to do. Um, you can, uh, th there's a lot of methods that provide a lot of functionality, but essentially, so my time is pretty much, OK, two minutes. Um, something wrong with your phone. <laughs> OK. All right, so um, yeah, uh, you had a question. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come, maybe your question will. Okay, so I was going to do a slide on the myths of scones, right? And I'm assuming that if you use C++ um, in any sort of reasonable sized project, um, your compiler spends some time doing work. Is that anyone experienced this? Yeah, so building a dependency tree is like orders of magnitude insignificant in compa compared to the compile times. And I actually haven't found any difference at all between using make or scons. Um, there's just, there was a lot of FUD from back in the day when SCONS was initially very slow, but I mean, I haven't experienced that at all. Sorry, yes? Yeah, I, I love the case inspiration, but... Um, so it'll work with anything, right? Mercurial, SVM, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, um, so what this does is it does two things. One is that if you have look, so a lot of people use things like Git internally now, right? So one of the things that you'll do is you'll have lots of separate projects then to manage. Instead of having one tree with subdirectories and branches, you'll actually have maybe lots of separate projects. And in those projects, you'll maybe run those out of Git. So this allows you to express directly inside your S construct file um, where your code comes from, what version you want it at, what branch, if there's a specific revision you want. All of that can be coded in there, and it will actually do the right thing. Um, so this gives you this, this. This allows you to clean up your code a lot. It caches it, so if you don't have, if you can't access it online, it doesn't matter. If you've got it, it'll build it. If you if you if you don't have online access and you don't have it, you can't build it anyway. It doesn't matter what you use. So you've got the caching, and the caching the caching solves that problem. Um, you can determine where you put your cache. So you can have the cache per project, or you can have the cache say in your home directory or somewhere. You know, so you can share it between projects. And there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, but yeah, so. So that's basically it. It also lets you build, um, for example, you could build for all the client tool chains. So if you're doing um, work where you're trying to uh, figure out uh, whether you want to have uh, code that works on three different compilers, this works obviously on Windows as well, um, or you want to have different ABI flags, well, you can pass it all in, and you can get maybe 12 or 8 builds. Um, you're, you're done. So I'm finished, I think. So any questions? All right, thank you.